Hello everyone and welcome back to the Chess24 Legends of Chess Tournament. We are continuing with the match Yanni Pomichi vs Ding Liren uh, and this is uh, one of the games that was played. It's actually the first game in their match but the most exciting one uh, so I decided to show this one. Uh, it features a very old line of the scotch, uh, you know, uh, revitalized with some, with some new ideas. Uh, and by new ideas I mean either pushing g4 or h4 as this is uh, basically what, what modern chess uh, has come to. So, without further ado, let's uh, check it out. Uh, and I also forgot to add something here. No, that's not it. Uh, let me just do this. Uh, you guys have no idea what I'm doing, but I, I know what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so it's there. So, uh, uh, Nepo opens with e4. Uh, we have e5 by Ding, knight of three, uh, knight to c6, and the d4 now. So, the scotch uh, game is on the board. We have uh, e captures on d4 and the knight captures. Uh, and now, uh, knight to f6. Uh, just continuing with the Schmidt variation. Uh, and here, knight captures on c6. Uh, we have d b captures on c6 and now e5, challenging this knight. And it's uh, been really a long time since I've last seen this game, but uh, it has really been played a lot in, in uh, you know, some, I, I would say, maybe even t 20 years ago. So, queen to e7, now just uh, pinning the pawn here so you cannot capture. We have queen e2, now threatening to capture, and the knight to d5. We have c4, challenging the knight, and now bishop to a6. Now pinning this, so you, of course, cannot capture. And now the most common move here is b3. However, here Nepo goes for h4. And now it's not a new move, it's, it has been tried before, but only, only a handful of times. So here Ding strikes in the center with f6, he wants to grab this pawn. And uh, the idea behind h4 is rook to h3. Now the rook can be transferred to e3 if the knight moves, or if not, uh, maybe later to, to a3 all the way to the queen side. So here uh, Ding grabs a pawn, uh, because why not? It is, it is a free pawn. And now bishop to g5, just continuing development, attacking the queen. And now you do have some issues. Uh, you don't really have all that many great squares for the queen. So uh, Ding instead brings the knight back. Knight to f6 blocks the bishop. However, it gives up the control of the e3 square. So Nepo immediately goes rook to e3. Not threatening, just rook captures on e5, which wins the game as it also wins the queen. Uh, and here, uh, there, uh, th this is still, uh, you know, uh, theory, uh, the, the, the position the two of them uh, have reached. And here, castle's queen side is the way to go. Uh, because if uh, rook captures on e5, you have queen before check, white king is still in the center of the board, and black has nothing to worry about here. Black I is even better. However, Ding played d6 here, uh, and it does look very appealing. You strengthen your center, uh, you're going to castle queen side next, so, so no problems here. And the position has been reached in 2016 uh, in the... Uh, rapid uh, St. Petersburg Championship uh, between uh, Alexander Morozevich and Sharafiev, where Morozevich played a g3 here and the game ended in a draw. But here we have queen to f3 by Nepo and there are a lot of threats on the board now. Queen captures here would result in check, uh, this, this and everything would just be hanging. So here we have e4 by Ding, pushing the queen back. Now it kind of invites bishop captures on f6 to remove the defender of this, but it doesn't really help because after you grab the queen, bishop captures, bishop captures, let's say g3, you want to recapture this next. The material on the board is equal. However, Ding would have the bishop pair. Uh, and not much to worry about. So instead we have queen back to d1 by Nepo uh, and now even d5 by Ding. And now it's a very interesting position, uh, probably one Nepo did not have uh, at home uh, in his uh, home laboratory. Uh, it allows for this uh, uh, idea of c captures on d5. Uh, the idea being that if bishop captures, king captures, but it's very interesting. For example, c captures, bishop captures, king captures, and now c captures on d5. Now you remove the defender of the d5 square, for example, captures, captures, and after queen captures here, uh, black will have a very hard game. It's a very, very unlikely that black will be able to, uh, to save this, especially in a rapid game. However, uh, Nepo decided to prepare with the knight to c3, just add more pressure to the d5 pawn. Uh, now you don't really have any options of doing something like this or anything because just captures and rook captures on e4 would be terrible for black. 
So bishop back to b7 adds more defense to the d5 pawn. And here we have a trade with captures. And now, uh, for some reason, Ding didn't castle queenside here. It's essential to castle queenside here to, to get your rook in front of the white queen. Uh, Ding just captured on d5. And now Nepo says, okay, I'm just going to remove the defender of the d5 pawn. And uh, your king will still be in the center, not, uh, not having all that much to do. So bishop captures on f6, removing the defender here. Queen captures and now knight captures on d5, threatening knight captures on c7 uh, after the queen moves, of course. Uh, so you kind of do have to capture it. Uh, so here, bishop captures on d5 by ding, and uh, this is now completely winning for Nepo. However, feel free to pause the video and find the winning idea uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not grabbing the bishop right away. Uh, if you grab the bishop right away, then you run into bishop b4 check. And now it's actually black who's winning uh, because you cannot go, uh, well, you can't go here because this just wins the queen. Uh, and also if you play something like this, queen a6 check and the black king has no squares. Again, you either have to give up some material here or you go here and then again, uh, rook to d8 is just winning or even king d1, queen captures here, uh, white completely falls apart. So, uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop to b5 check. So, due to black, what uh, uh, black was was uh, hoping to do to, to you uh, with this bishop to b4 check. Now, you played bishop to b5 check. And now, nothing really works for black. Because if c6, just queen captures here. Of course, this is pinned. You cannot capture. And uh, there's not uh, all that all that much for you to do. This is now happening. This is happening. So, uh, pretty pretty terrible for black. So Ding instead went, uh, went for bishop to c6. He blocked the uh, the bishop's check, but now rook captures on e4. Again, the bishop cannot capture. Bishop to e7 blocking, and now uh, the only move that uh, gives uh, white advantage. Uh, maybe not pause the video, but maybe just give it a give it a few few seconds. You know how do you how do you continue the attack with white here? I know all of you saw it, so we're just gonna play it. Queen to d5. It's very important to prevent black from castling. King said if black gets the castle, then then black is perfectly fine. This way you prevent castling, you prevent uh, captures here because this falls, this is still um, impossible because of the pin here. So here Ding played rook to d8, but now uh, now uh, we have bishop captures on c6. Nepo is still uh, up, uh, up a piece here, so he doesn't mind giving some back to survive the attack. Bishop captures, king f8, and now getting the queen out of harm's way while threatening uh, just rook f4 to win the queen. So Ding blocks it with bishop here. Now he guards this square, but now rook to d1. And now there are some ideas like rook captures here, remove the defender of the f4 square, win the queen. Uh, however, Ding plays g6. He says, I have no other options. I have to go for this. And now uh, if you play something like this, then yes, rook captures f4, wins the queen, but you have rook captures here. And after captures, captures, you have two rooks for a queen in a rapid game. Anything can happen, even though white white should win this. However, uh, Nepo says there's no rush in taking this. I'm just going to play rook d4 and win the queen this way with rook to f3. So, of course, Ding moves the king uh, and now rook to f3. And now the problem is uh, there's no really way for you to block rook to f7. So Ding grabs a pawn. Uh, not for the pawn, but the queen has nowhere to go, so you might as well grab it. But now rook f7 check. And here, of course, if you go to g8, it's just a quick mate. You go here, let's say you move somewhere uh, to f8. You don't have any other squares, and this is now mate. Uh, and uh, that's, of course, not something that Ding did. So king h6, uh, but now now you ha you kind of have to play king to f1. King to f1 is a move that, uh, you know, safety before finishing the game, you kind of want to have this option of rookie one just to block any checks. But Nepo instead played g4, uh, and now the threat is fairly simple. You want to play g5, king h4, and then, well, pretty much everything wins here. Uh, so, uh, queen to b1 check. Now, uh, Ding starts uh, uh, all the checking. King to e2, and now comes bishop to b4, opening up the rook's uh, attack here. Uh, point is that now, let's say if queen captures here, you have a mate here. Just uh, queen to d3 check, king e1, and queen to d1 is checkmate. So, the position is not without poison. However, after this bishop to b4 move, there is only one game uh, move that wins the game for Nepo. So, uh, while I give you a couple of seconds, uh, win the game for white, uh, yeah. 
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. It is the only move that wins the game. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's rook to d4. Block the rook, not don't allow a queen to d1. Uh, and you don't really care about queen to e1 because uh, Nepo calculated well that the king can escape. For example, queen e1 check, king f3. You can play, let's say, a nice trade here. Captures, captures, and queen to h1. Problem is, after king g3, there's no no good square for the queen. You're, you're either going to move the queen, as the queen is now under attack, uh, or you're just going to move it. Even if bishop d6, you can just block with f4. It doesn't really change anything. So you'd have to kind of capture or something, uh, but then just uh, g5 and, and it's uh, game over. Or you could try you could try this, uh, the go, go for this and then capture, but it's still the same. Just queen to g7 check now. You don't even have to play g5. So instead, after this... Uh, a rook to d4, uh, we have a rook, to a, a rook h to e8 with check, uh, pushing the king back. We have king to f3, and now queen to h1 by ding. Uh, delivers check, king g3, and now queen to g1 with check. King to h3 by nepo, and now what do you play here? Uh, well, again, if you go for something like, uh, let's say, a slow move with bishop to d6 to threaten checkmate or something, then it's, again, just g5 check, king moves, and now rook captures here will be checkmate. The king prevents the king and rook prevent the king from reaching g4. So here, after this king to h3 move, rook to e3 check, a nice, uh, nice attempt by ding, you have to try everything. Uh, F captures uh, and now queen captures on e3, so hoping for some sort of a perpetual maybe, or maybe if the king uh, you know uh, touches a touches a wrong square. However, just bishop to f3 here uh, by Nepo, and it was in this position that Ding Liren resigned the game, as there is no defense against either this, this, and this, or even if you play something like rook to h8 to maybe stop it. Again, it's just g5 because the bishop now covers the h5 square, so you don't even need to capture it. So you'd have to suicide here with, with queen captures, and that's just it. But yeah, of course, Ding did not continue this. After bishop to f3, he resigned the game, and an excellent victory for Jan Nipomnishi, uh, who wins the uh, match without even going for Armageddon, and a tough tough start for Ding Liren, who lost his previous match to Boris Gelfand, and also this one to Jan Nipomnishi. And now uh, I will show you the thing that I was preparing when you didn't know what I was doing. Here are the standings, well, not the standings, but... Uh, the results after round two. We're going to show the standings after uh, after round three. Also, let's not. Uh, so it's uh, it's the standings from the Chess Twenty Four website. There you have it. Uh, Yanni Pomnichi defeated Ding Liren, so he gets full three points with a result of two and a half to to to, to a half. Uh, uh, Vasily Ivanchuk uh, lost to Boris Gelfand uh, with two and a half to one and a half. Peter Swidler beat Peter Leko with two and a half, one and a half, so full three points. Magnus Carlsen defeated Vishwanathan Anand, full three points, two and a half, one and a half. And uh, Anish Giri defeated Vladimir Kramnik, two and a half, one and a half. So no Armageddons in, in round two, three, three full points for everyone. Uh, and the uh, the current leaders uh, of the of the event uh, are Magnus Carlsen, uh, Boris Gelfand and Peter Swidler. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Quite a, quite a lovely, uh, you know, little discovery by Nepo in the scotch with that h4 line and a nice rook lift and then Ding messing up with not going for a queenside castle. But, you know, that's just how, how good Nepo is. But it's interesting, both of them uh, members of the candidates tournament 2020. So maybe also Ding did not want to, you know, play something. But I don't think, I, I think they're just playing everything. I don't think they're like saving anything for the candidates. I mean, they will have to prepare again. Uh, when it's uh, finally, you know, uh, when it finally continues. But yeah, uh, I would like to thank McDuff Hughes, uh, Bryce Foster, Ross Martin, uh, Michael Pilgard, and Adam Nicholas for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Chess 24 Legends of Chess tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day. Uh, and yeah, I, I will be playing some four-player chess uh, today with uh, Hikaru Levy and uh, Eric Rosen on Twitch, so do check it out if uh, that's something you, you're interested in. See you soon.